The first video game I ever played was Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I still remember how it felt jumping up and smashing bricks, collecting coins and power-ups, knocking off Goombas and Koopas. I was a big fan. So you can imagine the disappointment of Little Ronald when the 1993 live-action film bombed with critics and audiences alike. It still sits on Rotten Tomatoes with a score of 29%. Well, 30 years and many iterations later, Mario returns to the theater. This time as an animated feature film with a budget of $100 million. It's the Super Mario Brothers movie. And it's a me, Ronald Young Jr. And I'm leaving the theater. Right, this is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing the Super Mario Brothers movie. The Super Mario Brothers movie, written by Matthew Fogel, directed by Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelenic, starring Chris Pratt, Anya Taylor-Joy, Charlie Day, Jack Black, Keegan-Michael Key, Seth Rogen, Fred Armisen, Sebastian Maniscalco. Maniscalco. Thank you. Sebastian Maniscalco and Kevin Michael Richardson. For a complete cast listing, check out the link in our show notes. I'm not here alone. <laughs> this wonderful person correcting my mispronunciations is here with me. You might remember her. She made you all cry at the live show. <laughs> oh, God, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> I am here with... Daisy Rosario. And you can't see me, but I am currently dressed like a real-life Luigi character. <laughs> this is very true. Can confirm. Wearing green overalls and a matching green... What is that? Hound's tooth? Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a hound's tooth driver's cap. Yeah. She looks fantastic. Dressed apart. We just got came out of the movie. I won't get too much into the plot because... You know, it's it's a Super Mario Brothers movie. I think you could probably <laughs> guess what the plot is in a lot of ways. Um, but let's just get into it. Daisy, what did you think of it? Okay, I, I, I wanted to make sure that people understood that I was wearing a Luigi outfit because I want people to understand how much I was ready for this movie. Yes. Very proudly representing the I don't have any kids, but I grew up with Mario contingent. <laughs> and I want to say... That if I'm a thousand percent honest, I liked it as much as I could, considering that Matthew Fogel did not do his job, but everybody else did. Ooh, shots fired. Oh. Okay, what do you mean by that? Uh, you said we're not going to get into the plot. There's, yeah, it, they okay. didn't add anything besides like the basics of like Mario, and sure. you know that would be fine. I think if there weren't so many things in the movie that kind of help you remember that like the Lego movie managed to be really fun and weird and subversive yeah. or some of the other just kids entertainment of the last 10 years that has had a lot of heart and smarts to it. Yeah. So um, I did and I didn't hate it. I don't want that to come across, but I did feel like eh, they missed some opportunities. Yeah. Like they could have invested in a couple of things a bit more. That said, it looks fantastic. Yeah. It looks so good. And so much doesn't look good right now yeah. that, like, that gets a lot of points, honestly. It looks really good. I, I want to point to a couple of things. So Matthew Fogel, the, the writer of this movie, when you put it that way, I 100% kind of agree with you. Because I you saw me in this movie. Yeah. I was having a great time. Yeah. Uh, and I was, and now that you say that, it kind of, like, confirms one suspicion I did had, which is that, and th this was kind of the problem I had with the Lego movie sequel, yes. which was that in the Lego movie, they pack it full of jokes. It's just joke, 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 joke. The Lego Batman movie, same thing. And the Lego, the sec the Lego movie, the sequel, same thing, where they just pack it full of jokes, 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 jokes. This one wasn't packed full of jokes. I think it had a, a good amount of jokes, but what it was packed full of was nostalgia and references. references. So <laughs> if you play the video game, it literally is going to scratch every single 
little itch that you have from the the scoring is probably the most brilliant yeah. move yeah. of this movie because Story. anytime something was happening, anytime something was happening that was just anything reminiscent of playing the video game, they immediately put the score underneath. Yeah. You said you said the score is good. Tell me more. Oh, the score is. I mean, the score is great. I mean, the music of Mario in and of itself is great, and they do some really fun orchestrations with it. I mean, they're. The placement of it, they're thoughtful with it, it comes in at great times. I was thinking a lot already as we were watching the movie, you know, kind of like what you said, there's a lot of references. And I feel like the thing about a movie like this, and and part of what really worked about the first Lego movie, Mm -hmm. because I do think that the first one is like miles better than the second one, is there is a fine line between like fan service. It doesn't have to be a fine line, but there's a fan service, there's a, a fine line between fan service and just exploring the reality of the world that has been created that we have not been able to explore in this way. I agree. And I think that like when, when we say not just for this movie, but for like lots of movies, star Wars universe is obviously very guilty of this. Like the difference between the fan service and the exploring of the world is like the latter is really satisfying. And the first one is like maybe satisfying that first time you see it, but it doesn't, actually build to anything and so there were moments in this movie that did feel just like references but there were moments that felt really fun and I think part of my critique of this uh, what I call the lack of script is that they could have used a little bit more of this world that they have created and the need to explore that world to have a little bit of plot that would have moved things forward in a good way but it really there was just a couple of spots. I mean, there were a couple of spots specifically where if they had just invested more in that moment, it would have carried things out a lot more in general. I absolutely agree. And I think that there were portions of this movie in which they were doing exactly what you said. They were exploring out the world a bit and then using references in order to expand it a little. Yeah. But then after a while, it just, it, it seemed like, and I don't know if this was like a studio note or mm-hmm. someone watching it being like, oh, we like this, more of this. Um, but it just seemed like at some point it just, it stopped being exploring and yeah. started being completely referential. And then on top of that, I think this movie kind of fools you into thinking it's more self-aware than it is sometimes. Yes. And I feel like and when I say that, they they do, they do check a couple of boxes up front. They're like, all right, just, so just so y'all know, Princess Peach is not a damsel in distress. She is not someone who needs to be rescued. Right. Check one. <laughs> Number two, who are we going to be saving? We're going to be saving Luigi. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, which is, and these aren't spoilers. This is all early on in the movie, I promise you. Yeah. Like, but this is, but they, they do these like little switchy things in there. So I'm just like, okay, this movie is like bringing something, you know, that was made in the 70s or 80s. They're bringing 70s? 80s? Well, 80s? The, the, like the original Mario, like Super Mario Brothers, yeah. like the first couple of games came around like right at the cusp. Yeah. Um, but then like the first like Mario Brothers game yeah. as we know it, like yeah. the one we're referencing in this movie, yeah. um, is yeah, is like 84. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's about right. So like yeah, so we're we're bringing it up to 2023. And when you think about what's happening in 2023 and the way storytelling is happening, yeah. you want it to be inclusive. You want it to be. You don't want it to fall into tropes and all that. And I think they did a good job there. But then they, it's kind of almost like they use that to disguise the lack of writing right. in this movie. And they use it to, I mean, the plot is paper thin, which is, and I know there's going to be people who be like, well, it's a kid's it's, movie. No, but that's, stop disrespecting children. Why do people hate kids so much? I, I agree. <laughs> stop disrespecting kids. You, you know who would agree with us? <laughs> Morgan Gibbons. Oh, we were literally yes. just talking about this, yes. and it is. It, it's treating kids say like Shel they're Silverstein. dumb. I was like, <laughs> well, I was also, like, you know who else? <laughs> also, Shel Silverstein. <laughs> but yeah, like it's like you, you, you come into this and you don't expect like movies. Like Toy Story has been, Pixar has been not making, uh, not making dumbed down plots for oh, years. Exactly. So we know right. it can be done. Yes. But this one, it feels like, and and you know what? To their credit, I will say this: there was another Mario Brothers movie. It was awful. One of the worst <laughs> movies ever made. Like, it's so terrible. Yeah, just one of the worst ever made. And this clears that hurdle very easily. It gives us exactly what, oh, yeah. what we want. Like, it, And it does a lot of that very quickly. But this, you know the plot is paper thin when we get to the end, and the ending is so abrupt yes, that so it, almost, it just pulls that's the rug exactly out from under I mean. you, you know? How did you feel about it? Oh, that's exactly what I mean. Okay, so God, I've never written fan fiction but I'm going to be fixing this movie in my mind (laughs) for like weeks because it's such like minor stuff that if they had just made tiny switches in certain spots, like would have made it run easily. And I, and I say that again, because we're talking about this thing where it's like, there's established IP, there's all these things you could be pulling from. And it was like, 
you know, if you've seen the trail, I'm going to reference some stuff in the trailer. No right? problem. Go ahead. If you, if you see the trailer, you see that there's Rainbow Road, yeah. which is from the Mario Kart games. Yeah. Great. I do want to see some kind of fun way that you bring these all in. Yeah. But it's very clear that they did not go like, okay, how do these things connect? It was more, how do we take enough parts that people recognize to make a movie yeah. instead wow. of going about it the other way and going like, well, what's the smart way that we can get to these things? And yeah. that's when, that's how you make something yeah. that I think really ends up sticking and that yeah. like lasts a lot longer when you have relics, like an IP like this that you could be building off of. Yeah, and I think you just, you know, because obviously, and, and I'm, I'm watching this and I'm thinking about the Sonic movie, right. uh, which I, I, I actually enjoyed them generally, yeah. one and two. Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog being the last movie I saw before the pandemic. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. So, yeah. So, yes. but that being said, I, I, I feel like, you know, when you get to a place where it's complete, it's just a blocks and gobs of references. Yes strung together by it by very thin plot mm -hmm. it does make me say like well what are you going to do with a sequel and they set up for a sequel and if sequel. you stay after the credits mm -hmm. they set up for a sequel and it's there which is fine yeah but then the, the next part is like well then what where's my enthusiasm for this while well, going into the next one especially when we're right, like there's no plot yeah. and that's what i mean it's yeah. like there's all of these other words i mean it's literally the super mario Brothers universe. Yeah, it like, already exists. The games yeah. itself, yeah. like, have a galaxy, have all these different things. And yeah. so the fact that it felt like you're grasping to try to create reasons to exist for things that you already have access to, that's yeah. weird. You shouldn't yeah. be working that hard there. Yeah. And, like, that tells me that you're not paying attention to it or yeah. thinking about it in in a way that is actually, you know, serving the larger story. But I can also see, and I don't want to blame Matthew Foley. You know, Fogel, it, Fogel thank you. Well played. <laughs> well played. His name. This is <laughs> well, I don't, <laughs> I would venture to say, and you probably, I don't think, it's probably not his fault. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the script that he wrote and he wrote yeah. something that was smarter and the, the studio comes in and says, we need a hit. We need a yeah. hit. And I got to be honest with you, I think this is probably going to be a hit. I think it's going to be a hit. I th I think it absolutely will be a hit. I think, though, that if they had maybe, you know, like I said, it's been a little smarter. I think that, you know, every everything just has short shelf life. And yeah. I think the difference between it being something that will be number one for weeks yeah. versus being number one for a week or two Ooh. is like some of what we're talking about. You know, because that's the thing. There's not like stuff to hook on. Yeah. Like it didn't make me excited to I was excited to see some of the the world because, sure, you haven't seen it. If you've played Super Mario Brothers 3D Land or Super Mario Brothers 3D, like then obviously like some of that looks really similar because yeah. that's just of course it does. But there's just all of this like rich, fun, interesting stuff that yeah. they can dive into. And they didn't tease any of that. Yeah. So. I, I do. I want to go back and play the games. Yeah, of course. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yes. You know, like it did make me want to play the games, but it didn't. I always want to play the games. Like, but yeah, it didn't. It didn't make me like super excited yeah. to see something else. I mean, they gave us certain things yeah. that were good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love Jack Black. Yeah. I will say, they let Jack Black do some Jack Black stuff. Yeah. And on top of that, Chris Pratt was not. He didn't take me out of the movie. He took me out of the movie. Oh, whoa! I hated him. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, I. The I, he really did take me out of the movie. And part of it, again, though, is like, to me, I'm like, don't cast the guy who was the lead in the Lego movie yeah. as the lead in your movie. Very everyman. If it's going to look similar at times, but be so, right? Like, it's don't do that. Well, see, I didn't think about him at all. Like, And maybe that's because I he was forgettable, but I didn't notice him. I now. just felt like he sounded like a Midwestern guy trying to put on a weird accent. Whereas, like, <laughs> Charlie Day is like, I don't think of Charlie Day as being especially Italian, but yeah. like, at least he sounds like a guy from Philly. He was crushing it. Right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. like that part of it, I was like, it's, he sounds like when I got to NYU and yeah. I would meet people that were like, making fun of people from cities isn't actually making fun of them. And they would just sound like sound terrible trying to do their accents. Yeah. I think that's what he sounded like. Yeah. I found it very distracting. And the only other thing that I will say that is technically a spoiler, but not. Uh -huh. There is a use of a song in this movie. Yeah. Towards the end of the movie. Yeah. One, I think the song has been used too much in general in movies in the yeah. last many years. But also, it's specifically really well known in a movie with Chris Pratt. Like, yeah. stop it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say, Daisy is doing this entire uh, interview with the fake mustache on. And I'm, I'm like, I, 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 <laughs> I have, I have Felix. <laughs> that being said. Where do you land on this movie? What do you rate this movie? Ooh, this is so hard. 
This is so hard. Um, now, wait, and let me preface this by saying, when we sat down in our seats, yeah. I turned to you and said, it would be very hard for them to, like, honestly, for this to be under three stars. It'd be virtually impossible for this movie to be under three stars. So where do you land on it? I'm going to go three. Okay. Is it is it a straight three or is it lower than three in your mind and you're you're bringing it up to three? Yeah, it's a little lower, but if I'm honest with myself, because I like the way it looks and yeah. I do love some of these characters, I actually really love the characterization of most of the characters except for Mario. Like, even if I just remove Chris Pratt himself from the equation, I didn't like Mario's part, mm-hmm. like how he was written and everything. Yeah. Um, it felt very like uh, Romeo and Juliet or West Side Story to me where I'm like, I actually kind of hate the main character right now, even yeah. though I don't hate the character usually. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I think for me, there's a lot of threes and 3.5 movies out there that like I really, really enjoy. Yeah. This is being edged to that space by my love of the actual IP and the fact that visually it does look great. I think for me, it lands somewhere between a 3.25 and a 3.5. And it's probably... The more I talk and the more I think about it, the more it's falling apart. So <laughs> I think it is a three, two, five. If I uh, like, and I, I, I'll probably wake up in the morning knowing that that is the score. Uh, I was probably a little more enthusiastic, and they got the references, got me. Yeah. And I want everyone that's going to see this movie, especially if you have kids, know that you are going to enjoy the references. You yeah. are going to have a good time remembering and be like, oh, wow, and oh, that's going to be cool. But when this movie is over, I mean, it is going to evaporate from your mind almost immediately and the abrupt ending the pulling out the rug at the end for me was enough to be like oh oh there's nothing here it's 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 gone and yeah i just the way it evaporates from my mind makes me think it's too thin for it to be a three five movie uh, or even and i wanted it i wanted to, in my mind i was like could this be a four star is oh, this a great movie and now it yeah it's it's just not quite there for me um anything else that i leave out anything uh, I mean, I I just think that visually it is gorgeous. I do want to acknowledge that. It's really fun to look at. Um, there are some fantastic little details. Like some of these things, some of these references are really fun. I, I know I'm going to end up watching it again because when it's going to be streaming, I'm going to want to pause and try to see some of the details in the background. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, that's the thing. Like the the there's not enough plot to like stick with me. And so I, I'm more uh, motivated to revisit the games, which I do constantly anyway. <laughs> I agree. I, I don't know if I'll ever, I mean, I'll, if it's on, I'll watch it. If it's streaming, I might watch it, but I don't know. I mean, it, it was, it's here. It's gone. There'll be a sequel. Probably they're going to make a million dollars. Uh, like, well, well, everyone makes a billion dollars, <laughs> but yeah, they, they might make a billion. I don't know. Well, it might do better overseas. So we'll see. Well, I mean, I think that, and that's the thing. Like Nintendo's an international brand and I yeah. think it's for kids enough that it will, it will like, and that's the thing, like, right. Merch. I mean, is it really movie merch or is it, it's merch for the franchise. So it's like, it's not, there's, it's not a lose, lose. I mean, you know, it's, it's a good situation for Nintendo overall, even though I do wish that the movie was just a stronger movie. Yeah. The merch slash franchise beast continues to feed on whatever is around. Uh, So yeah, I mean, see it, bring your kids. I think y'all enjoy it. And with that. Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show. Thank you, Tom. Show art from Heather Wilder. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. For more information about the Super Mario Brothers movie or Daisy Rosario, check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studios shows by following us on Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at Oh, it's Big Ron Stu. That's S T E W. Leaving the theater will be back soon. Thanks for listening. And thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Sebastian Maniscalco. Maniscalco. Thank you. Sebastian Manis. Calco. Maniscalco. Huh. I'm going to give it. That's exactly what I'm trying to be. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> Sorry, some kids recognized that I was being kids, Luigi. The kids love Luigi. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, with all of that in mind, I think I'm landing somewhere between a 325 and a 35. Who was he yelling at? I don't know. I think you just go, go from here. <laughs> with all of that being.